This is the new MacBook Pro, and it is absolutely incredible. To tell you all about it, I'd like to invite Phil Schiller up. Phil? Thank you, Tim. Thank you. Well, good morning, everyone. This is so exciting. A new generation MacBook Pro, and it is seriously cool. It has a whole new design made of aluminum. It is metal on all sides. It is incredibly extreme. And this kind of design is only possible with a unique, unique collaboration between our hardware engineering, our operations, and our industrial design team working together to solve problems others haven't even tried to tackle. It is the new gold standard in notebook computers. And it enables innovations not possible before. It comes in a 13-inch and 15-inch sizes, in silver and space gray. And it is simply the thinnest and lightest MacBook Pro we have ever made. So let's dive into a few of the details. First, let's look at the 13-inch MacBook Pro. Here's the previous generation, absolutely the leader in its field in performance and thin and light. But here's the new 13-inch MacBook Pro on the right. Yes, it is just 14.9 millimeters thin. That's 17% thinner than the previous generation. And it's smaller, too. 23% smaller in volume, almost a quarter less. That's a huge difference. And it weighs less, too. It weighs just three pounds, almost a half a pound less than the previous version. Let's turn it around so you can see the all-metal design on all sides. It is an absolutely stunningly beautiful notebook. Now let's look at the 15-inch notebook. Again, the previous 15-inch MacBook Pro, the standard, the best professional notebook that had ever been made until today. Here's the new 15-inch Pro next to it. 15.5 millimeters thin. That's 14% thinner. And it is smaller as well, 20% smaller in volume than the previous one, one-fifth less. It's a huge engineering feat. And it weighs just four pounds, again, a half a pound less. Four pounds for a high-performance professional 15-inch notebook. That's just unheard of. But what's really impressive is when customers open it up for the first time and look inside, because everything is all new. is a new trackpad, a force touch trackpad. It is twice as big as the trackpad in the previous generation. A lot more room for your gestures. Now this is only possible because of the force touch technology. In order to have a great click feel, if it was a mechanical click mechanism, it would not be possible. This is really state of the art and the best trackpad we've ever made. The keyboard is all new as well. It uses the butterfly switch mechanism that we pioneered in our 12-inch MacBook, but now we've applied it to a professional notebook. And in this case, there's a new switch mechanism, a second-generation butterfly. It's more responsive and gives an even greater sense of keyboard travel as you press on it. It is a great keyboard. And I could talk all day about it, but I think you're probably looking at that area just above it. <laughs> what our team has done in this area where function keys used to exist is remarkable. But before we get into that, I do think it's worth a moment for a requiem for the function key. <laughs> Many of you probably experienced for the first time, as some of us did, back with something like this. This is an IBM 3270 mainframe terminal from 1971. And that's when many of us first experienced this great new technology called the function key. And it allowed us to do operations on a mainframe terminal. Well, those function keys migrated to our desktops and to our notebooks. Over 45 years, we've been using function keys. Well, actually, for the last who knows how many years, we really haven't been using them anymore. Because when's the last time you've had a 3270 mainframe terminal emulation session? <laughs> it's been a while, right? So we've mapped other functions onto these keys. We've put volume and brightness on them. But this is crazy, keeping 45-year-old technology around and mapping other things to them. Now, our, our design team has, has taken on the challenge to move forward and say, what if we get rid of them? What could we do in their place? What technology could we provide that actually enhances the experience 
that we all have with our notebooks all day long. And what we've done is truly remarkable. This is what it looks like. It's a retina display. It is multi-touch. It responds to your gestures and your taps and makes things incredibly easy to use. We call it Touch Bar. Now, Touch Bar can do so many things to help us as we use our MacBook Pro. First, it replaces the standard system functions we're used to. So if you want to set the brightness or the volume, it's easier than ever before with just a slide or a tap. But it goes way beyond that. The Touch Bar adapts to whatever software you're using. So for example, in this case, we're in Safari. And now, the Touch Bar is showing us buttons for our favorite websites. If you want to go to a website, you can just slide along and tap it, and it takes you to that website. Once you're there, it changes again. Now it shows you a search field, a back button, and add another uh, tab in your view. Just the tools you need for where you are. And it goes beyond just being application specific. The touch bar can provide new surfaces for tools that we use all the time. So for example, here I am in photos, and I want to straighten that photo. I have a new interface right there on touch bar for straightening the photo. And my hands are right down on the keyboard where I want them in a notebook. It's a perfect experience. And since it's near the keyboard, it's also really helpful when you're typing. So as you're typing, the touch bar can show you quick type suggestions. You can just tap on and type even faster. It is incredibly useful and intuitive and really fun to use. Well, next to touch bar is another technology. Touch ID. We're bringing Touch ID to the Mac for the very first time. Yeah. So now you can log into your Mac with your fingerprint. And it's integrated right where it belongs, in with the power button. It's supported by a second generation Touch ID sensor, so it's really fast. It's covered with a sapphire crystal, so it feels great. And it's supported by a brand new chip, the Apple T1 chip. And this chip includes a secure enclave. So now you can do Apple Pay purchases with your finger right on your MacBook Pro. <laughs> so this is the touch bar in Touch ID. And to show it to you working live for the very first time, I'm really excited to bring up Craig Federici. Craig? Well, good morning. Thank you, Phil. Uh, it's a rare privilege to be able to be the first to show you the amazing new MacBook Pro and Touch Bar uh, live in action. And to do that, I'm going to have to do a grand reveal here. So here's my, my David Copperfield moment. All right. Here it is, the new MacBook Pro. Well, getting started on your Mac has never been easier. I can, with, we've now brought Touch ID to the Mac. So now I can just take my finger, rest it on the Touch ID sensor, and I'm instantly inside my Mac. Now I want to focus our attention here on the amazing new touch bar. The first thing is system controls. You'll be relieved to see they're all still here. So you can access your brightness, uh, your playback controls, your audio, and for the first time ever, Siri has a dedicated key right on the Mac keyboard. It's really great. Now, Phil's Touching eulogy for the function keys may have been a bit premature. I know some of you had some 3270 emulation uh, sessions planned for this afternoon, and good news, they can carry on. Because if you hold down the function key, you notice they come right back and available to you right here. <laughs> it's a huge relief. Now, normally you're going to run with your system controls tucked away in control strip. And what's really great is control, control strip still makes it really easy to do everything you want to do with your system controls. Because you have multi-touch, you can tap and slide right here to do things like adjusting your volume and your brightness. But you'll notice here in the middle is an area for, sys for contextual controls for the apps that you run. And let me show you those inside of Mail. So here we are in Mail, and you notice that the bar has been transformed. So now I have controls for things like uh, adjusting, uh, uh, composing a message, replying, even flagging, all right here. And as I work my way through my messages, you'll notice Another button here. This one actually provides predictions for where I might want to file my messages based on my previous filing habits. So I can just send this one off with a tap. 
It's that easy. Now, because Touch Bar is part of the keyboard, it's great for typing. I can reply to this message, and you notice I'm presented with QuickType options, and QuickType has learned how I like to communicate. So I can just respond to this one with, I'm totally stoked, <laughs> right there. And when it comes to formatting my text, Touch Bar has me covered as well. You see, it presents formatting controls. So for instance, I can make the text bold, change its color. It's all that easy. And when I want to address a message, I'll just click in the CC field here. You see, it even predicts who I might want to add to this message. I can do it just like this, and with a tap on the Send button, send this message on its way. Now, of course, what I've done here in terms of typing English text has become totally passe. It's all about emoji now. So let me bring up messages. And you'll see what happens as I type pumpkins here on the bar. QuickType suggests a replacement emoji that I can add with just a tap. But Touch Bar even provides a great interface for browsing all of my emoji. I can slide through them just like this or even browse them by category. It's super easy. Let me just go back to my frequently used, and I can finish composing my response just like this. Now, sometimes you get a message from a friend and you realize you want to give them that necessary emotional uh, ballast with a quick uh, response. You can give them a, a thumbs up or maybe even a heart to give them that personal affirmation they need to make it through the day. <laughs> it's really great. You can do that all right on your touch bar. Now, Touch Bar is really fantastic for navigation in your apps. You see, here I've opened a Safari window that has multiple tabs, and Touch Bar is transformed with a control for moving between my tabs. I get previews here. I can just tap and move through my tabs like this, or even slide and get a preview. And when I want to open a new tab, well, that's easy too. I can tap on the plus button, and you see right here I have all my favorites. I'm just going to tap into an item I've had my eye on here on Etsy. And you see, now that Etsy is bringing Apple Pay to their checkout page, well, I can actually buy this impulse purchase here with just a tap. I can securely authorize the payment with Touch ID. It's that easy. And soon I will be feeling the amazing power of pyramids and copper together. It's going to be absolutely fantastic. All right, let's move on to photos because the touch bar is really great in photos. Now, I can take photos here full screen. This is obviously not my personal photo library, but I'm able to enjoy this photo in full screen on my main display because touch bar takes over all of the navigation. So I have this strip of all my photos. I can easily swipe between them or flick my way to the end of my library. It's super easy to identify a particular photo like this one. And you notice this is a video. So I have playback controls right on Touch Bar. And if you notice, Touch Bar also has a scrubbing control with a preview of my video. So I can just scrub the video forward, backward. It's a really great use of multi-touch. Now, Touch Bar is also great for making quick edits. So if I go to a photo like this that maybe I want to rotate, you notice there's a control on Touch Bar to do that. I can do it with just a tap. And I can do more powerful edits as well. For instance, I might want to make some adjustments on this one. I can use my leveling control. You can see I can level just like this. It's really easy. I can perform adjustments to lighting, for instance. I'll tap into my light slider. I can go darker or lighter. I can also apply effects and filters. You see those filters are actually previewed right here on the touch bar. So I can just tap through, look at different effects, pick one that I like. There's even a button to preview the before and after. So I think those are a great set of edits right there. So, yeah. so Touch Bar obviously has some amazing out-of-the-box controls to accelerate everything you do on your Mac. But pros really like to customize their tools to match their personal workflows. And here, Touch Bar really shines. I'm going to show you something in Finder. So here in Finder, when I select a file, we see we have a bunch of useful controls, like I can quick look and share and even tag my files right from the touch bar. But maybe I want to do something different. Well, now I can customize my touch bar. And you see I get this palette of all of the capabilities available to me. Let's say I like to connect often to servers where I store my big assets. Well, now I can drag this button. And I want you to watch what happens as I drag it to the bottom of my main display. 
It drops right through into the touch bar where I can position it down there. It's incredibly easy to customize the system. Now, you can customize your control strip and even your set of primary system controls. So I could add a do not disturb button or this cool new screenshot control. Just drag it down, place it where I want it, and just like that, I've customized my touch bar. Now, for my grand finale, I want to pull full circle, and that's back to Touch ID. And so for this final demonstration, I'd like to bring Phil Schiller to the stage. Now, Just someone random from the audience. Some <laughs> random individual chosen from the audience. It turns out, I'm going to reveal a little secret, Phil and I actually share this machine. And so Phil has actually enrolled his finger in Touch ID. And when Phil places his finger on the sensor, it actually recognizes him. And with a click, he can fast user switch right into his account and get his work done. Fantastic finger work, Phil. So that is a quick demonstration of the new MacBook Pro and its amazing touch bar. I hope you love it. Thank you. Thanks, Craig. The one and only Craig Federici, ladies and gentlemen. Well, Craig showed you so many great uses of touch bar on the MacBook Pro, and it doesn't stop there. It's integrated throughout the system and throughout the applications we all love. So now it's so much easier to search for things in Maps with Touch Bar. It's so easy to answer a FaceTime call right from the Touch Bar. It's great for zooming between weeks in your calendar. It controls your music playback when you're in iTunes. There's complete support across all of the iWork applications, so it's built into Pages and Keynote and numbers. It's awesome when you're editing videos in iMovie. And it's great for controlling the musical instruments you play in GarageBand. We've even built in touch bar support into the ever popular terminal. <laughs> <laughs> and for developers, they're going to love the support in touch bar inside Xcode, not only for using Xcode, but creating touch bar in their own applications. So there are so many great uses of the touch bar. It changes the experience we have on our Mac, and it's really wonderful. So now let's turn to the display. The display in the new MacBook Pro is simply the best display we've ever made on a Mac. Compared to the previous 15-inch MacBook Pro, it is 67% brighter. It has a 67% greater contrast ratio. It displays wide color with a 25% greater color gamut. All this in a display that consumes less power and is as thin as a 12-inch MacBook display. It's amazing. Now let's flip it over and let's look inside, because the engineering innovation is just as remarkable on the inside of the new MacBook Pro. So every 15-inch MacBook Pro includes, oops, I'm sorry, every MacBook Pro is the most powerful MacBook Pro we've ever made. <laughs> there you go. So inside every 15-inch MacBook Pro is an Intel Core i7, sixth generation quad-core chip it's, pa it's paired with faster 2133 megahertz memory. It is a really fast system. It has faster graphics as well. Radeon Pro Graphics, this is the AMD Polaris architecture, up to four gigs of vi video memory, and it delivers graphics power that's now 2.3 times faster than the previous generation 15-inch MacBook Pro. And the storage is faster too, now up to 3.1 gigabyte per second you can figure it with twice as much, up to two terabytes, and it's 50% faster as well. Now, all this performance of faster CPU, faster graphics, faster memory, faster storage, in a device that's thinner, took creating a whole new thermal architecture. And the team's done an amazing job at this. New thinner heat pipes, new innovative fan blades, and allow us to run the system cooler and quieter as well. The one thing that's not quieter is the speakers. The speakers fit into a smaller space, but they put out more volume, and it sounds better, too. It's got twice the dynamic range of audio. Now, this is a system that just flies, and it is incredible at the apps you use. Every day, you're going to feel the performance increases. So here's some examples of the performance difference between the new 15-inch MacBook Pro and the previous generation. The new MacBook Pro at 3D graphics, 130% faster. At gaming, 60% faster. 
Video editing, 57% faster. This is the kind of performance you feel. Everyday, real-world applications. So that's the 15-inch MacBook Pro. Now let's look at the 13-inch MacBook Pro. It can be configured with dual-core, sixth-generation Intel i5 or i7 chips, also mated to 2133 megahertz system memory. It has faster Intel Iris graphics with 64 megs of ED RAM, which provides up to two times the graphics performance of the previous generation. And it also has the faster flash storage. In this case, that now delivers twice the storage performance of the previous 13-inch MacBook Pro. And here's some examples of real-world application tests on it. The new 13-inch MacBook Pro is 103% faster at gaming than the previous generation, and 76% faster both at video editing and 3D graphics. Now, the system's much faster, and so is the I.O. It is the fastest, most versatile I.O. we've ever built into a MacBook Pro. Both the 13 and the 15 inch have four Thunderbolt 3 ports. That delivers an incredible 40 gigabit per second of bandwidth. It also supports USB 3.1 Gen 2, and of course, DisplayPort 1.2. Now, I know many of you know that Thunderbolt 3 uses the USB-C style connector, and that means that any one of the four ports can be a charging port. Plug it into whichever one you want, left side, right side, and that's your charging port. But it's so much more versatile than that. Each one of the ports can be power, can be Thunderbolt, can be USB, display port, video out with VGA or HDMI. So here's an example. Imagine you're a Final Cut Pro editor and you want to set up your MacBook Pro on your workstation at home at work. You want to build it out. Well, here's an example of what you can do with this incredible system. First, you want to add a display. And there are many displays you can add over DisplayPort, but this one is really special. This is a brand new LG display that we work together with them on to make it an amazing display for MacBook Pro customers. It's called the LG Ultrafine 5K display. It displays 5K resolution. It's wide color. It has built-in cameras, microphones, and speakers. It has three USB-C ports, so you can plug peripherals directly into the display. And all of that connects to your MacBook Pro over a single Thunderbolt 3 cable. Not only that, it also charges the MacBook Pro over that same cable. It is the ultimate docking station. And it's so cool that why not add two, right? So you can have two 5K displays plus your built-in 15-inch retina display. That's almost 35 million pixels being driven by the graphics of the 15-inch MacBook Pro. With our two free Thunderbolt 3 ports, we're going to add not only one, but two RAID storage arrays. This is the new Promise Pegasus 3. It's configured with 24 terabytes per array here. So when you think about that storage, those displays, this level of expendability and performance is not possible on any other notebook. It's truly remarkable. The new MacBook Pro combines the fundamental qualities of an ultra-portable device with uncompromising performance. With our new design, the product's overall volume has been reduced dramatically. This results in an extremely purposeful and powerful creative tool. It has the best retina display we've ever put in a notebook. A precisely designed LED spectrum projects through a metal oxide backplane. This yields a remarkably bright, high contrast picture with a wider color gamut. The larger force touch trackpad now provides an expansive area for a whole range of gestures. We've continued to refine our keyboard design to be more accurate and efficient. Dome switches beneath each key have been optimized for a more responsive feel. We're introducing a new way to interact with your notebook. A multi-touch bar provides a more intuitive, more immediate connection to your content. Commands that were once hidden are now visible, easily accessible, and also customizable. In each application, the most relevant controls are displayed dynamically, 
allowing you to work with greater efficiency. This is also the first mech with Touch ID. This seamless integration of hardware and software is truly unique to Apple. The speakers have also been completely redesigned to maximize air displacement and project high fidelity room filling sound. At its core, pro-level processors integrated with high-speed system memory and storage technologies make everything you do faster and more responsive. In a notebook this powerful, thermal management is critical. Thinner, variably spaced fan blades propel air quietly through a nearly solid structure. The new MacBook Pro achieves a design that optimizes both performance and portability. It marks a milestone in the evolution of the Mac. The new MacBook Pro runs our latest version of macOS, Sierra. And Sierra takes full advantage of all that the MacBook Pro has to offer, its wide color display, it's touch bar, touch ID, and so much more. And the hardware and software working together in these super thin and light notebooks deliver all day battery life, up to 10 hours of battery life in both the 13 inch and the 15 inch. This is an incredible new generation of notebook. Now it might be fun to bring back in that first generation of notebook, just for comparison. <laughs> it is remarkable how much occur has occurred in just 25 years. <laughs> you may not remember that first PowerBook 170 had a 9.8 inch black and white Active Matrix 640 by 480 display. It's incredible now with a 15 inch retina display how far we have come. That PowerBook 170 had a state of the art 25 megahertz 68030 processor. Now we've done the math. The new MacBook Pro is 6.8 million times faster. <laughs> yes. Or thought of another way, a full year of compute time on that PowerBook 170 can be accomplished in less than five seconds on the MacBook Pro. It is, it is remarkable. We have advanced so far, including in how we make these. Our MacBook Pros are all made with arsenic-free glass, mercury-free displays, they're BFR-free, PVC-free, beryllium-free. They're all Energy Star 6.1, they're all EPEAT gold, and of course made highly recyclable with their aluminum and glass. The team has set out to make simply the best notebooks ever for our high-end professional customers, and they've absolutely hit it out of the park with the 13-inch and 15-inch MacBook Pro, and we think our Pro customers are going to love them. Now we do have other customers who choose other products in our line, like MacBook Air, and they choose them for how thin and light they are. And we're gonna to continue to offer MacBook Air in the 13 inch in our line. But we challenged our team to take this new design, this 13 inch MacBook Pro, and could they make a model that would be really exciting for customers who would traditionally pick a MacBook Air. So we're making a model of the 13 inch MacBook Pro with traditional function keys and two Thunderbolt ports. And we think that a lot of potential MacBook Air customers are going to be very excited about this product, too. So how does it stack up? Well, you know the MacBook Air is beloved for its incredible thin and light design. Here it is. Well, let's bring the 13-inch MacBook Pro in next to it. Remember, we told you the MacBook Pro is 14.9 millimeters. That is thinner than the MacBook Air. It's actually 12% thinner. <laughs> now. I know what some of you think. You're saying, well, MacBook Air is a wedge shape, so it's probably smaller. No. <laughs> the MacBook Pro is 13% smaller in volume than the MacBook Air. What about weight? They both weigh the same three pounds. So MacBook Pro weighs the same as MacBook Air, and it's thinner and smaller. So let's look at them another way. Here, they are, here we are looking down on top of a MacBook Air. Let's slide on the 13-inch MacBook Pro on top of it. 
you can see how much smaller it is, why it has a lower volume. It's this advanced design, incredible new techniques that make this 13-inch MacBook Pro so small, so light. Here they are back to back, MacBook Air on the left, MacBook Pro on the right. The MacBook Pro is smaller, but better in every way. It has a 13-inch retina display. It has a faster processor, faster memory, faster storage, faster graphics, more advanced trackpad, more advanced keyboard. It is an incredible new product. So now you see we actually have three models of the new MacBook Pro. A 13-inch with traditional function keys, a 13-inch with touch bar, and a 15-inch with touch bar. Now there are many configurations of all these, and you can CTO it with all the different things you want on it, but they each of course have an entry configuration. So I want to walk you through those now. The 13-inch MacBook Pro with function keys starts with a 2 gigahertz dual core Intel Core i5. And it turbo speeds up to 3.1 gigahertz, so it's really fast. It has Intel Iris Graphics 540. It has 8 gigs of faster system memory, 256 gigs of faster flash storage, and two Thunderbolt 3 ports. The 13-inch MacBook Pro with Touch Bar and Touch ID starts with a 2.9 gigahertz dual core i5. It turbo speeds up to 3.3 gigahertz. And of course, it has four Thunderbolt 3 ports. And the 15-inch MacBook Pro with its Touch Bar and Touch ID starts with a 2.6 gigahertz quad-core i7. It has a Radeon Pro 450 graphics and starts with 16 gigs of memory. The pricing for these three configs are $1499, $1799, and $2399. You can order them today. The MacBook Pro with function key starts shipping today. The two models with Touch Bar and Touch ID start shipping in two to three weeks, but of course you can get in your order today. So those are our MacBook Pros. Before we finish, I want to bring back one other product as you think about this line. Here are the three new MacBook Pros, and I've added on the left the 12-inch MacBook. Because that 12-inch MacBook started us on this path. It created many of the pioneering technologies that we've now adapted and evolved for the MacBook Pro. And it really makes sense together as you consider this line. 12 inch, 13 inch, 15 inch. Two pounds, three pounds, and four pounds. Starting at $12.99, going up to $23.99. From the most extreme portable notebook we've ever made to the most powerful notebook we've ever made. We think this is the most forward-looking advanced notebook line we have ever had. 